further details on it. But we're told that it will just be extra enforcement for folks to stay at home. We're told it will be less restrictive than California, which, of course, we know closed parks and beaches. But we are told that this stay-at-home order will be issued just telling folks to stay at home. Don't panic. Don't run out and buy everything in the store, but just stay at home. We're told things will still be open. We want to listen I'm in right now to Judge I'm here with Mayor Hidalgo. Sylvester Turner. Um, we also have uh, social distancing off, off the, uh, the shot for in case folks have any questions. Uh, Chief Acevedo, Chief Peña, the fire chief for the city of Houston, Chief Bunick from their Office of Emergency Management, Francisco Sanchez from the Harris County Office of Emergency Management, Dr. Purse with the city of Houston Public Health Department, Dr. Shaw with Harris County's Public Health Department. I know Council Member Cassick Statum is here as well. And, um, and so those folks will be available to answer questions. I will speak, then Mayor Turner will, uh, followed by Dr. Mark Boom, who is the CEO of Methodist Hospital, as well as the physician himself, and Dr. Porsa, who is the CEO of the Harris Health System, as well as a physician. Um, first, let me thank everyone who is doing their part. I recognize a lot of people are staying home. They're avoiding crowds. They are helping us get through this in the best way possible. And to all of you, thank you. We need you and we appreciate the sacrifices that each of you is making. A lot has happened over the last few weeks and we know that um, more will happen, but we are taking all of this one step at a time. We are being thoughtful. Um, we are being uh, guided by data and information, by experts and science, and we are working very hard to stay ahead of this virus to prevent us from getting to where um, the difficult, very difficult positions where other communities have ended up already. We have been in touch with several healthcare professionals. For example, Dr. Berwinkle with the Stu School of Public Health at the University of Texas, uh, who informed us uh, very alarmingly yesterday we must take steps. Now, uh, any delay in additional action would be incredibly problematic. Uh, the models he has produced um, require us and uh, truly exhort us to take uh, additional aggressive steps. The frontline entities who are fighting the, this disease are our hospitals. The CEOs of each of the hospitals at the Texas Medical Center, as you all know, the largest medical center in the world, come together every day. Um, to discuss coronavirus. They've never been more united than they are today. And I speak with the CEO of the medical center, um, Bill McKeon, almost on a daily basis. They are seeing the rate of patients coming into their hospitals. And they have also sounded the alarm. So you'll hear in a little bit from Dr. Boom with Methodist Hospital. And, and, and he will share, as he shared with me, an exponential increase that uh, he has seen in the number of patients coming into the hospital, the percentage of those who need to be treated in the ICU, and the length of time that patients have to spend in intensive care. We're seeing that patients here are having to spend longer in intensive care than in other places. Um, what these experts, leaders, and folks in the front lines tell us is that if we keep going at the rate we are going, we will end up in the situation that New York is heading towards, um, that Italy is at, where we simply run out of ICU space, regardless of the surge capacity that each of them and, and all of us are helping to build, that we simply would have to get there. And so that is why it's incumbent on us to take additional steps above and beyond those we've already taken. We've been working very, very closely with researchers, with businesses, with local elected officials uh, from throughout the region. But the most important factors are science 
and health. We are letting science, data, and health drive the decisions we make. Our North Star is the best data we have and what our medical community is telling us to do. So after consulting with these folks, we're taking today another step um, to prevent the spread of, of coronavirus. When we put out the bar uh, and, and restaurant order with Mayor Turner a few days ago, we said that if we erred, we would err on the side of action. And in that spirit, we are taking steps to prioritize human life. And so I'm issuing a stay home, work safe order for Harris County, uh, walking in lockstep with Mayor Turner and proud of the partnership that we have uh, across our region. This order will apply throughout Harris County, including unincorporated areas and all the cities within Harris County. To put simply, this means that all of us should stay home unless our jobs are essential for the health and safety of our community. Those of us whose jobs are essential to health and safety must do everything we can to maintain six feet from one another and um, keep ourselves safe. So that's what we mean. Stay home unless your work is essential. And if your work is essential, you must work safely. Hence, stay home, work safe. We are um, following a simple model. By staying home, we are saving lives. We are flattening the curve of the virus, and we're making sure that we're not overwhelming our, our healthcare system and therefore our community as a whole. No one, including myself, wants to be in a position to sign that kind of an order. I know that it will cause hardship, uh, more financial pain, that it will be difficult on top of what we're already facing. But on balance, we recognize that the minute we end up in a decision where we're having to turn people away from a respirator, from an ICU bed, and choosing who lives and dies, um, that we don't want to be in that position, that, that that would be catastrophic. And the models we have show us getting to that position where we far exceed the number of ICU beds in this county unless we take drastic steps. To be honest, it was a hard, it was, it was, um, it was, it was not a hard decision based on the data because if we follow this, we will save lives. The, the order will be effective tonight at midnight and will go until April 3rd, which is as long as the governor's order is in effect for to make sure that we are consistent with the state. We will, of course, revisit the order as necessary. Now to go over um, what the order entails. There is a list of 16 sectors that is put out by the federal government called the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Guidelines, CISA Guidelines. The federal government notes what the 16 sectors are that are essential, and the idea is to maintain the supply chain of these essential sectors across localities and across the country. And so that list includes things like energy, healthcare, transportation, critical manufacturing, and others. The order will have a retooling exception for factories, for example, who can uh, turn to making hand sanitizer, N95 face masks, respirators. Beyond that, in terms of gatherings, all public or private gatherings outside of a single household or living unit will be prohibited except for essential activities by member of the community, uh, members of the community. And that includes, of course, tasks essential to health and safety, so medical professionals um, needing to get necessary supplies, food, pet food, household consumer products, engaging in outdoor activities so long as there is social distancing. And so we are um, going to start by allowing parks to remain open no playgrounds, no exercise equipment, no benches, nothing that can be touched because we know the virus can live on surfaces for up to 48 hours. Folks who do leave for uh, outdoor spaces must maintain social distancing of six feet from any person. And we'll see how we, how we do with that. Um, 
folks can leave their home to care for a family member or a pet in another household. So that's, that's the context of essential. Obviously, all businesses, except for essential ones, will, require, will be required to seize all activities. Essential businesses must comply with the six-foot social distancing requirement to the best uh, extent possible. Restaurants remain at takeout, delivery, drive through but they must space customers out at six feet um, from, from each other. Daycares that provide support daycares that provide support for essential employees will be open. If someone in a household has tested positive for COVID, they will, the household is, uh, will be ordered to isolate. Uh, members of the household will not be able to go to work. Religious and worship services only via video or teleconference. We will be making an exception for faith leaders to be able to minister one-on-one -on -one for mental health purposes, for spiritual health purposes, as long as social distancing is being implemented. This is incredibly complex. It is as messy. We've been working round the clock for several days to get this right. You can't flip the switch and turn the lights off on a county of five million people, and that is not what this is. Uh, the attorneys are still working. We're working to uh, apply lessons learned from orders elsewhere to make sure we're not contradicting anything. Um, and uh, we hope and trust people will comply, but we will be ready to enforce this order. A brief note, you know, not enough is being said about physical, mental, and emotional health. And so I do want to point out, you know, the exception we are making for uh, faith leaders to be able to minister one-on-one -on, -one. on harrishealth.org. Folks can see a, a link to our mental health hotline. Um, of course, that's the thinking behind keeping the parks open and, and we will be watching and hoping that folks will employ social distancing. So again, um, no playgrounds, no basketball courts, right? We don't want people close together. And, um, and we'll continue thinking about how else we can support our community. Finally, an update on county testing. We starting, started countywide uh, community testing yesterday. We referred uh, about 500 people total to the sites. That is 100% of our testing capacity for the two sites that we open. Yesterday, we had almost 24,000 residents visit our online screening tool, and we are continuing to integrate with the city site so that um, we can all go through that and work in lockstep. Uh, the, the only caveat there to be aware of, as I've been mentioning for the past 10 days or so, we are relying on federal government supplies to keep these testing sites open. So they sent us a, chi a shipment, uh, I believe last Friday, that's the one we're being able to use. We had the pilot this weekend, we opened yesterday, and that shipment will last us certainly through today. Uh, if we don't receive the additional shipment we are expecting from the federal government, we will have to stop uh, our county testing for the most part again and wait until that shipment arrives. And so that is the challenge we have. Uh, but we are ready to continue 100% as we did yesterday, and we will, uh, we're in direct contact with our federal, federal partners and trust and hope that that shipment will arrive. So let me uh, stop there. I will uh, briefly repeat remarks in Spanish, and then I'll invite uh, Mayor Turner and the doctors to speak. And you just heard a stay-at-home order issued by the Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. In fact, she calls it the stay-at-home work safe order. A lot to unpack here. I'll start here. It is effective tonight uh, at midnight until April 3rd. She says that will go along with the governor's order. So she says, what does it include? She said all should stay at home unless our jobs are essential to health and the safety of our community. She says you cannot uh, engage in any play on a playground. You can't touch the benches. You cannot uh, play on a basketball court. But they will allow the parks to remain open. She is saying that she wants everyone to practice social distancing as they try to flatten the curve here for COVID-19. All businesses except essential ones will have to cease business. She says it's 
far as the restaurants are concerned, they will remain open. There will still be curbside. There will be drive through. You can pick up your food there. But she's asking all restaurants to make sure that uh, the people that show up to the restaurants practice social distancing. As far as religious and worship services, this are video only for that. She also talked about county testing. She says that they referred about 500 people to the site to be tested. That is 100% capacity. 24,000 people visited the online screening site that we talked about yesterday. Also saying as far as testing is concerned, because they are now at capacity, they are waiting on a shipment from the federal government saying that if they do not get that shipment, they will have to stop testing until then. Again, if you are just now joining us, uh, we just heard from the county judge, Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo, saying that there is a stay home, work safe order that has now been issued for all of Harris County, mentioning that this will affect five million people approximately who live here in Harris County. By the way, the fifth largest county in the United States. She mentioned that this is not necessarily a curfew, but it is a stay at home order. What does that mean? She says it means that people who have essential jobs, who work in health care, who are essential to getting the word out to people about uh, what's going on, you can go to work. But she is asking that if you are on the roads, if you are out, to make sure that you have an essential job in doing so. Here's what she says, too, that they are trying to flatten the curve. She mentioned that this was uh, kind of a hard decision to come to, saying that they spoke with health care officials, several health care professionals who, quote, had an alarming tone, if you will, saying that they showed her models that showed uh, also the Harris County uh, personnel models as well as the city of Houston models showing that they should take more aggressive steps. Seeing the rate of patients coming into hospitals, according to these health care professionals, seeing it at an alarming rate, the percentage of people being treated in ICU, also the length of time that people People were staying in the hospital was all part of this in which she has now issued a stay at home work safe order. As we mentioned, this will affect a lot of people. We're talking about five million people approximately that live here in the city or in the city of Houston as well as in Harris County. Also, we want to mention again the testing sites. There are two testing sites up and running here in Harris County, one in the city of Houston. We talked to them yesterday. They have now, according to the Harris County judge here, Judge Lena Hildago, they have referred about 500 people to those sites. It is now at 100% capacity with 24,000 people visiting online screening sites uh, there that they opened yesterday. So we want to go again and talk about this stay-at-home order in case you just now joined us here. This is what this means. You have to stay at home unless your job is essential to health and the safety of this community. She says that it could cause some hardship and more financial hardship for those in the community, but she says she just does not want to be put in the position where they are, quote, choosing between who lives and who dies. She says she also does not want to be put in the same position uh, as places like New York. We know that New York has a very stressed health care system right now. Also, this stay-at-home work-safe order, as Judge Hidalgo calls it, uh, is effective tonight at midnight. It will last until April 3rd, as long as uh, the governor's order. Governor Abbott has an order in place as well. And again, she mentioned, unlike California, which also uh, has a uh, shelter-in-place order, is what they're calling it in California, they have closed off parks and beaches there. According, according to uh, uh, Judge Lena Hidalgo, the parks will remain open, but she's asking that people social distance uh, make sure you practice social distancing if you are there at the park. Do not touch the benches because we know that COVID-19 can uh, live on surfaces for quite a time. Don't touch the benches. Do not allow kids to play on the playground. You cannot uh, play at the basketball court as well. Uh, you must stay six feet away and all uh, businesses will cease. As far as the restaurants are concerned, so many people concerned about the restaurant. In, fa in fact, today is Takeout Tuesday, hoping that people will uh, patronize these businesses. But she says that if you do that under this stay at home, work safe order, you have to call in. And she's asking the restaurants to make sure that people 
practice social distance as well. So here are the latest numbers. As far as we know uh, from this morning, 199 coronavirus cases across 12 counties in our area. We know that two people have died from the coronavirus. 18 people have since recovered. So the judge saying that this was uh, sort of a hard decision to come to, but she says she is doing it so that they do not have to, quote, choose between who lives and who dies. Again, a stay-at-home work-safe order just issued uh, coming down here for Harris County, issued by Judge Lena Hidalgo. The mayor, Mayor Sylvester Turner, there standing on stage, also expected to echo what she is saying as well. Here are some latest numbers we have as well. Uh, some confirmed cases as far as the coronavirus. We've confirmed that an employee at the Amazon Distribution Center in Brookshire tested positive for the coronavirus, as well as an Ailey ISD person who works there, a woman who is confirmed to have it at Owens Intermediate School, diagnosed with COVID-19. The district says she is in her 40s. Of course, she is uh, at home trying to recover. The, the district saying that they have deeply sanitized those schools. But we want to go back to what the judge said, the county judge issuing what she's calling a stay-at-home, work-safe orders. In essence, the county and the city does not want people to panic because of this order. That does not mean you need to go out and hoard groceries and buy food. She says you can go to the grocery store. You can if you need to go to the grocery store. You can go if you need to take care of a sick relative or an, even a pet. But she's asking that you stay at home as much as possible. She says uh, as far as the religious community is concerned, there will be no more churches held in person. They will all be online as far as community uh, religious and worship services. But this is something that uh, we just haven't, we've never seen here in Harris County. We're talking about uh, a population of about 5 million people who are affected. And she's asking everyone to keep this in mind that if we all do this, she says that if we stay at home, if we social distance, they will hopefully flatten the curb. And here's how they came to this decision. We listened in. Uh, first, uh, Judge Lena Hidalgo thanking the community. She says thanking everyone who are actually doing their part in staying home and avoiding crowds. But she says a lot has happened over the last few weeks, admitting that she and the mayor have been talking with health care professionals who uh, alarmingly, as she said, that's a quote from her, alarmingly informed them, showing them models that show that they should take more aggressive steps. And that has led to this stay at home order here. She says that those healthcare professionals are seeing rates of patients coming into the hospitals and they are sounding an alarm with the percentage of people treated in the ICU. Those are the alarming rates that she's talking about. She says also the length of time that people are spending in the hospitals was also another alarming rate. She says she does not want to get to the place uh, of New York that has a stressed health care system, so they felt a need to do this now. A stay at home, as she calls it, and by she, uh, the Harris County judge, uh, Lena Hidalgo calls it a stay-at-home, work-safe order. She says, quote, taking steps to prioritize human life. And this is after consulting with many health care officials. I'll mention again uh, some of the numbers we have so far this morning. 199 coronavirus cases, and that is across 12 counties. Two people so far have died in all of Texas. 18 of them have since recovered. And this has just been quite telling here. We know that so many businesses are struggling because uh, of what's going on with COVID-19. The judge saying basically that we all see you and, and we understand the situation. As far as restaurants are concerned, today uh, nationally is Takeout Tuesday, hoping that people will go and, and they'll place an order. They'll call and place an order with the restaurant in hopes that we can keep some of these restaurants alive and in business. But she says that if you do that, and we are encouraging you to call these restaurants, but if you do that, make sure that you understand that you will have to practice social distance when you go and pick up that order. They were asking restaurants to make sure that customers say at least six feet apart. You can do curbside, you can do pickup, but make sure you are practicing social distancing. Something that's uh, very interesting is coming out. We do know that California has um, a shelter in place order, and that has included, because of so many crowds gathering on beaches, and, uh, and gathering at parks, they have actually placed very restrictive 
uh, orders in place there in California. That includes closing the beaches and closing the parks. Judge Hidalgo wants to make sure that we understand that so far that is not the case. But she mentioned that they will, of course, revisit this. And here's what she had to say about enforcing this. She said, quote, we hope people will comply, but we will be ready to enforce this order. Not exactly sure what that means, but we're sure that we'll hear about it here in this press conference. This is Mayor Sylvester Turner. Let me, let me start off by, by thanking uh, Judge Hidalgo for, for her leadership um, and for the order that has been put forth uh, this, this morning. Let me say um, uh, we've had the opportunity to, uh, to work with the judge and even on yesterday on a conference call that was convened by the judge where there were over uh, 50 other individuals in our surrounding region, other mayors, other county judges, uh, in which we discussed the order uh, that is being put forth today. And I can say to you uh, without reservation uh, that the judge and I are standing together. We both recognize uh, that these are very challenging times. In fact, let me go one step further. We are in a health care crisis. And in order not to prolong uh, this crisis, in order to blunt the progression of this virus, we both recognize um, that steps need to be taken in order to slow the progression, to blunt it, so that we are not in this situation longer than we need to be. In the region, in our region right now, even beyond Harris County, there are about 160 confirmed cases. Uh, the steps that are being taken this morning is the hope of that we don't have 1,600 cases uh, in our region, or the number just doesn't continue to go up and up and up and up. In the city of Houston, we have 24 cases. Uh, doesn't mean that there are only 24. There are more than 24. We all know that. But the goal that we are taking is so in the city of Houston, we don't have 2,400 cases or 24,000 cases. And the best time to take the steps that are being put forth, are the best time is right now. We don't have the luxury of waiting uh, two weeks down the road and then deciding that this is the time to take these steps. Uh, will it impose an additional inconvenience on many of the people in our region? Yes. Are those inconveniences worth it? Yes. Do we have a choice based on the health care advice and that we are given? No. Did we come to this point easily? No. But is it important for people within our respective regions, for people in Houston and Harris County and even beyond, to recognize that this situation is serious and to recognize that if we don't act and act now, then the situation will, will only get worse. And we keep talking about flattening the curve, but it's important that we do that through our actions and through our behavior. In our region, in our region, we have faced major storms, we have faced mass shootings, we have faced chemical releases, and in those times, we have asked people to shelter in place. And that terminology, shelter in place, should be reserved for shootings, explosions, major storm events, rain events like Harvey, when we ask people to shelter in place. This is a, another type of crisis, another type of cri uh, 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 situation that requires strategies that you are uniquely adopted in order to address it. And therefore, what is being presented in the order that the county judge is putting forth is a stay home, work safe order. Let me say the stay home, work safe order is a more strategic way to blunt the progression of COVID-19 and balance the needs of families, businesses, and the city's economic interests the new order means people must stay at home, except when they need to conduct essential businesses and activities. But the requirement for social distancing remains in effect, whether you are at work or whether you are away from work. The requirement for social distancing remain in effect. You must stay six feet away from others. If you work in a critical infrastructure industry, you have a special responsibility to maintain your normal work schedule, which is in the best interest of the community. 
the stay home work safe order exempts essential workers covered in the 16 CISA categories, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency. They are the people who work in transportation and logistics to maintain our safe drinking water, communications and technology, and commercial and residential construction and many more. Houston is the energy capital of the world. We have the largest medical center in the world and the number one port in terms of foreign tonnage, and we are proud of that. Those critical workers and others will be allowed to continue moving back and forth through the community because we must balance our health care concerns with economic realities. But even though in those particular essential industries, those, uh, they are being allowed to continue to work, while they are at work, they must, practice, must be safe and must employ as best as possible the social distancing and other requirements, and we expect them to do that. For others, stay home, work safe means employers are encouraged to let their team work remotely from home where possible. People working from home do not have to shelter in place or feel as though they are, they, uh, that they can't move around. You still can go to the grocery stores, to the pharmacists, to the gas station of medical treatment, um, uh, or seek medical treatment. And I want to be very clear on this because we've said over and over again that the grocery stores would not shut down. And they are not shutting down. Even with this order, the grocery stores remain open. The food supply chain remains sound. Okay, it remains sound. But even as you go to the grocery store, or to the pharmacists, you still must engage in social distancing because that still becomes very important. Otherwise, we are defeating the very purpose that we are trying to achieve. Residents can also go outside to run, walk, and exercise if they practice social distancing and stay at least six feet away from other individuals. Now, Judge Adago indicated that we are keeping the parks open, and we recognize uh, that people are just not going to, in a sense, stay right there in their homes, that they need to walk outside in, in their communities, in their neighborhoods, and will go to the parks. But let me put a cautionary note here. That does not mean that you can flood the parks and crowd the parks and not engage in social distancing. If you go to the parks, then you need to be responsible. You need to it's continue to maintain the social distancing. And if you do not do that, then again, we are working against each other's interests. We are both trying, all of us are trying to be flexible and recognize the social dynamics and the human dynamics. But you still must exercise individual responsibility. Over the last several days, we have asked residents to comply with new restrictions from shutting down bars and nightclubs and allowing restaurants to serve only takeout and delivery. But the message is clear. You must stay at home to help blunt this progression of COVID-19. And the best way to reduce the spread of the coronavirus and stop the pandemic is through critical, through strict social distancing. As we do more testing, we're getting more evidence of community spread. We know for every new positive result, there are more people we do not know about who may have the virus. And we do expect the numbers to rise. That is not new, but we can blunt its progression. If we work together, we can get on top of COVID-19, and the sooner we can stop the progression, the sooner we can all return to our normal way of life. As Judge Hidalgo mentioned, the order will begin tonight at 11.59 p.m. and end on April 3rd. And I will ask members of City Council and others to join with us in explaining and articulating the message to all of the people within the city of Houston. We are in this together, and we must work together to protect public health and, sa and safety. And let me just say in closing, my destiny is in your hands, and your destiny is in my hands. 
and where we go from here in large part will depend on how we now change our behavior to recognize the crisis that we are in. And it is serious, and we have to take it serious. But one thing that I know about Houston, Harris County, and our surrounding region, that when people are given the truth, and when we're asked to do something, we get it done. And this is one time when we're asking people within our respective regions to stand together, to operate responsibly, and let's blunt the progression of this virus. And let's do it now without having to look back two weeks from now or a month from now and regret that we did not take the necessary action when we could have. We're in this together. We'll come out of it together. And in the end, this area and this region will continue to grow and prosper. The best days, the best days for all of us still yet to come. Thank you so much, Mayor Turner. We'll hear from Dr. Mark Bloom, CEO of Methodist Hospital, as well as uh, here on behalf of the Texas Medical Center CEOs. Dr. Bloom. Thank you, and I want to start by thanking Judge Hidalgo and Mayor Turner for making the right call. Um, I'm here uh, as a representative of the entire Texas Medical Center. As was mentioned, uh, all of the CEOs of the Texas Medical Center, we start our day with a 7 a.m. call each day. There's 11 of us on the call, uh, and we are unanimous in our support of moving forward with this order. Let me explain a little how we come to that decision as a medical community. We don't come to that decision lightly. We recognize that it requires a great deal of sacrifice and that everybody really has to work together to do this. We come to that decision based on data, and we come to that decision based on science. We have looked at modeling, which Judge Hidalgo has alluded to, that says the time to act is now. We have heard from the modelers in town that says the time to act is now. Every piece of data we see coming in from our institutions says that the time to act is now. Every piece of data and advice as we look around the world is that communities who do well do well because they act briskly, promptly, and decisively to help um, push this down. Once this gets out of control, it is extremely difficult to control and bring back down. So we are all unified in our approach and, and really very grateful that this will happen. This is all because of uh, the nature of the virus, which spreads to two to three people from each infected person, which is a pretty large number in the book of viruses, so to speak. In other words, what happens mathematically is as you infect two or three people and they infect two or three people and they infect two or three people, the mathematics of that shoots up dramatically. And when that shoots up dramatically, that's when things get out of control. If you look at China, if you look at Northern Italy, if you look at what's emerging in New York City, much to our alarm, right now, those are communities where this has gotten past the ability or is approaching past the ability of the medical community to respond. And that's exactly what we are trying to avoid in the city of Houston. Across the Texas Medical Center I just described, you were talking about 70% or so of the adult inpatient capacity and probably pushing 90 plus percent of the pediatric capacity across the city. So you have alignment really of a great critical mass of leadership across the city. Every one of our hospital systems is working diligently to do all of the things that we need to do to be ready in a situation like this. First and foremost, we all stopped doing our elective procedures and many other procedures to really start emptying out capacity without in, within the institutions. We're focusing on all the supplies, the equipment, the ventilators and everything else that we need in place. And we're focusing on what I term surge in place capacity, which is the abil ability to expand what we're able to do within our four walls. Uh, figuratively for each of us uh, as, as we continue to surge and we're doing planning uh, even beyond that today. Now, as I look at the healthcare providers, the physicians, the nurses, all of the people on the front lines, we all went into these jobs because we knew we were there to help people and we knew that in times of crisis it was time to step up and I want to just thank all of the healthcare providers, all of the frontline uh, emergency care responders and others across the city and the counties uh, and surrounding counties um, because of the heroic work they are doing. They really truly are heroes. This is all about flattening the curve. This is all about what we all do together as has been emphasized by both the judge and the mayor. Everyone has to work together. This doesn't work if people ignore this, if people don't uh, do this. 
because of that two to three person infection chain that I talk about, um, if we can break all of those connections that happen among people, this will not spread. And then we can sort things out and figure out how to get out of this and move on with our lives, which of course is what we all want to do. So I want to thank everybody in the city of Houston, in, the, in, the, in Harris County, in the surrounding areas for your support uh, and for uh, your compliance with this. Um, we're here for you and uh, your medical community is working diligently to make sure that we're all prepared for this and all there to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Boom. If Dr. Ismail Porsa with Harris Health, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Good morning. Uh, I also want to thank Judge Hidalgo and Mayor Turner for your leadership, uh, for your foresight to act more aggressive than less, and to act sooner rather than later. As you all heard this morning from everyone who's spoken so far, the idea here is to slow down the progression of this disease. I also want to reemphasize the fact that the TMC hospitals, including Harris Health, are lockstep behind this decision, the directive that was just issued. Put it simply, the idea here is to buy us time. Cities of New York, Seattle, and San Francisco are unfortunate examples of what can happen when this disease goes unchecked and how quickly it can overwhelm our healthcare facilities and really disrupt the fabric of our society. And that is what we are talking about and that is what we are trying to prevent. It makes a huge difference if whatever the total number of cases, either being 1,600 or 2,400 or 24,000 or 240,000, and the total number of cases that are going to arrive at our hospital because they need hospital care or critical care in terms of ventilatory support. If it hits us next week, and the surge comes over just a two-week period of time, or if it comes to us next month and the surge is spread over a two-month period of time, it makes a huge difference. As our understanding of this disease improves, as testing capabilities improve, as the production and distribution of PPEs improve, our ability, the ability of the healthcare providers to respond to this disease improve. We're able to better take care of the patients who are going to arrive at our hospitals. I want to say one thing, and that is about, and you all heard it today, that we can defeat this virus. We can prevent the devastating impact of this virus by coming together, by staying apart. Coming together by staying apart. We can do this. I also want to extend my thanks to all the frontline staff at all the hospitals who are taking care of our sick ones. You guys are heroes. You are being asked to do more with less every day. Please do know that we appreciate everything that you do. I have one asked from the community. You all can help our hospital systems by reducing the number and frequency of the visitors who are arriving at our hospitals. Our hospitals are already experiencing an overwhelming number of patients coming to us. It takes a lot of effort to help our visitors to go to our patients. If we can reduce the number and frequency of the visitors coming to our hospitals, it would help our staff take care of your loved ones better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Porsan. And I do want to echo the thanks to all of our first responders frontline medical workers who are keeping us going through this crisis. And also point out, we are all first responders in this. To the extent that we stay home, we abide by this order, we will lead our community into a successful place. Uh, we'll take questions now from the media. Thank you, Judge. So the first question comes from Maya Shea from ABC. She would like a reaction to Senator Betancourt's news release that is critical. Uh, about shutting down the third largest county in the country. And also a question from Joel Eisenbaum from KPRC for the mayor. On Friday, you said the city isn't shutting down. Does that blindside Houstonians you reassured? As I mentioned, the guiding factor, the guiding light in this process is the health and safety of the community. We are making decisions based on the best information we have on the best advice of the frontline workers, the leaders of our hospital systems, the 
analysts and experts who are looking at the data and working to sound the alarm and say this is what you have to do right now so as to avert a crisis. And that's led to today's decision. The recommendation they've made so far, what the data tells us so far, um, is not that we have to shut down the county or the city of Houston. It is that we have to stay home, stay home, and allow essential businesses to continue. And we have outlined what essential is, and that those essential businesses must do their absolute best to enforce social distancing. That there may be space to allow for folks to visit the park to get some fresh air so long as they do their part and each of us do our part. And so we are where we are based on information and data. There is no other way to do it. That is the only way, the only consideration in the decisions we are making. And so it truly leaves us no choice. Uh, I trust right now that we're doing everything we possibly can. And I know that if we work collaboratively in this, we will be able to make it through. But it's incumbent upon all of us, uh, including all of us in leadership, to heed the advice of the experts and the medical professionals. And let me reiterate, this is a stay home, work safe order. With respect to the businesses that are essential, uh, those are identified, there are 16 different categories in the cybersecurity and infrastructure agency put forth by the federal government. With respect to the energy sector and your petrochemical sector, your transportation sectors, those are all essential. With respect to residential and commercial uh, construction, those are essential. With respect to your food supply chain, the entire food supply chain, those are essential and those things will continue. With respect to your transportation sector, those things that are essential, those things will continue. Uh, with regards to going to the grocery store, the pharmacy, going to a convenience store for food items and others, those things are essential and when could, will continue. With regards to, for example, needing to take care of your pets, uh, we have made provisions for that. Furniture, things of that nature, those things will continue. So I would encourage people to take a look at the uh, stay home, work safe order. We have tried to strike a balance between recognizing that where people can work remotely from home or they are not essential, they need to be at home, those things are provided for within this order. Where people are needing to work in order that are essential to keep our city and county and region moving forward, those things are being allowed. That's not a shutdown. It's simply being smart and being strategic. But neither is this the time to be trying to second guess or quarterbacking from the back row. The reality is this is a new situation, it is a new challenge, and we all have to be nimble and fluid in terms of the strategies that must be put into, a, into effect to address a situation that literally changes every day and sometimes even changes during the course of the day. And it's important for us in working with the medical community and those who are on the front line to address it based on the needs and the facts and the science that are presented. What I do know is that you have the healthcare personnel on the front line. You have police officers and firefighters and other uh, uh, law enforcement personnel on the front line. You have people, governmental employees that don't have the luxury of going home if their, if their services are needed. Sanitation, solid waste workers, they're on the front line. And so it's important for those of us, those of us, to be able to make decisions, even adjust our policies, in order to make sure that the city and the county continue to function, that they continue to operate, that we do it in a very strategic and measured way, that we balance our health care interests with our economic interests, and you try to strike a very delicate balance. But let me be very clear. These are not easy decisions. They are not easy decisions. But neither are these conventional times. And so it is important for all of us, 
all of us to work together. And I like what Dr. Porsche say. We will, we will work together at this point in time by working apart. And that's key and that's critical. The goal is to blunt the progression. And I'll be very honest with you. We will take whatever measures that are needed, even if, if one day we say something and next day based on the facts, the science, things change, we will adapt our strategies to overcome this virus. But the key thing is that we all must do it together. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, question from KHOU for the public health officials, um, asking for comment on the age trends on positive cases in the region. For example, 80 positive cases are with people in their 40s and 50s, while only 14 or 65 and older. Uh, is this something you expect to continue to rise? And um, uh, for the, the judge or, or anyone else, uh, why issue the stay at home, home order today? What changed your mind over the last 24 hours from KHOU and Ted Oberg along those lines? Uh, is curious about uh, walking us through Judge Hidalgo, the timeline for your decision on this. So <clears throat> my name is uh, Dr. Umair Shah. I'm the Executive Director of Harris County Public Health and the Local Health Authority for Harris County. And I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. David Purse, the EMS Director and Local Health Authority for the City of Houston. And I really want to, first of all, uh, uh, just say that uh, with the judge and the mayor and all of the, our partners that are here, we are absolutely committed and united in our decisions and also the fact that these are the best strategies to help flatten the curve. And that question about the age and what we're seeing is a good reminder that while we are talking about at-risk populations, those who are the, the seniors, those who have um, pre-existing health conditions, those who have weakened immune systems, pregnant women, while we're particularly concerned about this virus for them, the trends that we are seeing is that there are a number of individuals, in fact, a significant number of individuals that are not in the older categories of individuals in our community who are testing positive for COVID-19. They're actually younger. In fact, we even have had now individuals who are uh, under the age of 10. And so we have to remind ourselves that while we are focusing on protecting those most at risk, that there are individuals in our community, people like me, people who are very much feeling like, hey, I can go out and do everything. We have to recognize that we too can test positive and we too can then potentially spread this to others, especially at the high risk groups. And that's why we cannot let people think that this is just one category of individuals. This is all of us in our community who are at risk all of us in our community who have the potential for getting infected, and all of us in our community who have the potential of transmitting that to others, especially those most at risk. So I think it's very important, and that question really highlights the fact that all of us have a part to play, but we are gonna see some changes in the trends, especially as the case counts increase, as we get more testing, we'll start to see shifting of those trends, and I wanna make sure everybody understands that let's continue to watch the patterns, but those patterns will evolve in time. And we're certainly doing that locally, but also looking at what's happening in other parts of the country and the, and the world. Dr. Purse. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. And I, and I would basically just echo what Dr. Shaw had to say, but I think everyone can sort of get their head around the concept that here in the beginning, as the numbers are, uh, are growing, and with limited testing, we're going to see these apparent statistical aberrancies that don't seem to make sense. But the bottom line, which Dr. Shaw pointed out, is that anyone, in fact, everyone, is at risk for contracting the illness, or I'm sorry, contracting the virus. And so that's what a lot of the test results now are showing are people who have tested positive. That is not to mean that they are all gonna require hospitalization. And we've heard the, from uh, the beginning of this that the group that is at most at risk for the greatest complications are the elderly and so I think people confuse thinking that it's only the elderly who can become infected. Any of us can become infected. We have been seeing as this goes around the globe that those with chronic medical conditions and the elderly are the most likely to have the worst outcomes. So those are two different uh, concepts. The important thing is that any one of us can become infected which means any one of us once infected can spread it to our loved ones and that's why we all need to follow the advice that has been put forth by uh, uh, the judge and the mayor about stay home, work safe, because that's how you stop the spread, minimize the spread, slow down the spread, and protect those that are closest to you, which is generally your family members. 
Thank you so much. I will answer the other questions in terms of the decision making for the order. As we lead the community through this crisis, my intent is to stay ahead of it, uh, to prevent the worst from happening. And so I'm constantly thinking, how can we do better? How do we make sure that we're not catching up to this virus, but we're staying in front of uh, the, the, the harsher repercussions? And so we've been doing research all along, and certainly very deep in research toward the end of last week you know, how do folks do this in other states, in other countries? We can't hermetically seal Harris County or the city of Houston or other cities. And so we're not like the island nations that can close or all their borders. Um, we're not like South Korea, which can test, you know, 10,000 people every day and ensure that everybody who has but a cough gets tested and that way they are very carefully mapping out exactly who has the virus and for that reason they're able to to have a, a surgical response if you will given the tools at our disposal given the the state of our healthcare system you know we have we have fewer beds per capita per capita than italy 20 percent of harris county is uninsured we know that we face unique challenges and with all of that in mind it started becoming clear toward the end of last week that we were going to have to use a blunter tool um, and this began the conversations earlier with the bars and restaurants you know that blunter tool is is is, is encouraging people to stay home um, is is encouraging the social distancing and then the matter turned to how can we make this order as effective and smart and po as possible and that's what we've been working on over the weekend into yesterday making sure we're talking to all the stakeholders Holders, the big point and what this order communicates and what I want to make sure gets across is the order is to stay home. If you are an essential worker, part of an essential sector, you must and you must go outside for your work, then you must keep the six feet distance to the extent that you can, but everybody else work from home. Um, stay at home unless you must go out for groceries or to, to get some fresh air, but that's, that's it. And that's, that's really the point that we want folks to get across. We haven't stopped looking at the research. We will continue the conversations with our healthcare professionals, with the academics, with other jurisdictions. I've been on the phone with all kinds of jurisdictions to try and learn from what they're seeing to try and do better. And that's the challenge that will continue. That is our goal, to do better, to be smart harder, to stave off uh, a bigger crisis. And that is what we're guided by right now and what we're fighting for day and night, day and night. Thank you. Two questions on enforcement uh, from Dylan McGinnis at The Chronicle. Any additional details on enforcement would be greatly appreciated. For example, will police be out on the streets enforcing social distancing? And ABC 13 asks, how strict will the county be on enforcing social distancing? Will there be fines or penalties for anyone who doesn't listen? The provisions in the order will mirror the provisions in the uh, bars and restaurant order, which is a fine and up to 180 days in jail. And obviously it will be up to our law enforcement, our police departments, our constables, our sheriff, um, to use their discretion on this. And, and so, you know, we are not a police state. We are relying on folks to do their part. I trust that they will. If folks are, um, you know, willingly violating the order in a way that puts other people at risk, then, you know, we will work with law enforcement. But I, I really believe and I, and I trust that folks will comply because this is about the health of all of us, as Mayor Turner said, you know, everybody's health is in each other's hands. Could you repeat that in Spanish as well, sí. please? Me han preguntado si la policía well, you have been listening in eh, to Judge Lena Hidalgo, the Harris County judge, as well as Mayor Turner. Mayor Turner is saying we are in a health crisis. And because of that, the Harris County judge, Hidalgo, issued a stay-at-home, work-safe order that will affect 5 million people in all of Harris County. And that includes uh, the people of Houston as well. They mentioned that Harris County has 160 cases of COVID-19. The city 
city of Houston, 24 cases. So what does this stay at home work safe order mean? It says that people who are essential, unless your job is essential to health and the safety of the community, you are asked to stay home. What else does that mean? That means that grocery stores, a lot of people, I'm watching social media, a lot of people asking the question, uh, what does essential mean? The grocery stores will remain open. Uh, the city of Houston mayor is saying that the food supply chain remains uh, solid. So you can go exercise, you can go to the parks, but you are not allowed to touch uh, the benches at the parks. You can't play basketball at the parks because they are asking that you remain you. Uh, within social Turner, distancing uh, guidelines here. We're going to listen in if you've again. been working in lockstep with the judge 24-7 for days on a stay home order. The judge and I talked uh, pretty much every day and sometimes several times a day. Uh, and then even as it relates to the stay home work safe order, uh, we've worked on it, talked quite a bit about it. Um, was on a uh, telephone conference call on yesterday with about 50 other mayors and county judges and um, leaders across our region discussing it. And I know the two, uh, the two teams, the county team and the city team, um, multiple agencies have been working jointly with one another. And we recognize that we are in lockstep and we have to move forward together. It uh, doesn't do, make any difference. If Houston does something and Harris County does something else, quite frankly, Houston is all within Harris County. So we are, we are one, one team. And that is true even as it relates to others in our region. We recognize that we are all interconnected, that our boundaries are very porous, and that people travel from one location to another. And if I can go even further than that, I've been in conversation with almost all of the mayors uh, in um, uh, m large city mayors uh, across the board in the state of Texas. And as you can see, starting on yesterday, uh, uh, they have taken similar actions. San Antonio, for example, announced uh, its order yesterday. Stay home, work safe order yesterday. Uh, Austin is moving forward to, uh, this morning as well. So uh, we all recognize that we are interconnected and that if we're going to achieve the objective of flattening the curve, we have to work together. That's, that's not an option, that's a, that's a must. We have to work together. And then lastly, what I would say, you know, is I would love for it to occur that three months from now, or whenever it is, that we have the evidence that we did blunt it, that we did flatten the curve, and our numbers didn't just dramatically rise, uh, and be criticized that we took we did too much. I, I think we'll all fully accept that. We'll all fully accept that. But let me tell you what we, what we cannot uh, accept, and that is not doing nearly enough, and then the, the numbers rise dramatically. And then when we look back, we said, if we had done this, if we had taken these steps, that would be unacceptable. So I think it's important for all of us to be attentive and listen to the facts, the science, the medical advice that's being given, and then make the decisions based on that analysis. I think that's the best we can do. We wish we could all have that perfect vision, uh, but in this situation, as in many others, you make the best decisions and you hope for the best outcome. And if we work together, I am, I am hopeful that we can have a positive outcome. Judge, I want to thank you for your leadership uh, and the leadership and the, and the efforts of your team. Um, been very diligent at it, been very meticulous, and it has been uh, in these tough times, as I've worked with others, uh, worked with you in the same manner, and the relationship has been a very positive one, and we are both help, hopeful that what we are doing will make a very positive difference. So thank you so very, so very, very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Mayor Turner and Judge Lena Hidalgo closing out that press conference where they announced a stay at home work safe order effective tonight at midnight until April 3rd. A lot of people on social media on ABC 13's Facebook page with a lot of questions. We want you to know that we will have everything for you. In fact, it is already there at ABC13.com. But just quickly so that you know, that exempts essential and critical workers. And who are those critical workers? We have it listed at ABC13.com, but there are 16 sectors that 
that includes communication, chemical, energy, financial, food and agriculture. The mayor noting that things that will remain open here, he's saying do not panic here. The grocery stores will remain open. The gas station will remain open. If you are seeking medical treatment, you can indeed go to the hospital. You can go to your medical care uh, facilities if you need to do that. Those will remain open. He says the grocery stores will remain. The food supply chains are uh, solid, he says. You can go exercise, but he is asking that if you are out there in the parks, do not touch the benches, don't play basketball, make sure you are exercising uh, the social distancing guidelines that are uh, in place right now. So what does this mean? We are under a stay at home, work safe order. Do not panic, but make sure you follow those guidelines. This is according to city officials saying that they are hoping to flatten this curve. I will end with this. The, the county judge saying that they are, quote, taking steps to prioritize human life here. If you have any other questions or anything you need to know, you can go to abc13.com as well as our news app. Have a great day. This has been breaking news from ABC 13. For more information, head to abc13.com or open our ABC 13 news app.